Wacky Religious News, Dateline Saudi Arabia. This just in, a girls' school in Saudi Arabia has defied a religious ban on female sports by erecting basketball hoops and letting pupils play at break time, the Daily Al-Watan reported on Wednesday. Powerful clerics in the conservative Islamic kingdom have long spoken against allowing women to play sports, with one senior figure saying in 2009 it might lead them to lose their virginity by tearing their hymens. Well, yeah, this just in, clerics, you don't lose your virginity by playing sports. If that was possible, I would have had a much easier adolescence and a lot of teen movies would have had no storyline. Now, I don't know if playing sports does cause girls to tear their hymens, although, as Dave Barry would say, the torn hymens would be a great name for a female rock band. But even if it did, that's not the same as having sex. The only way a girl could lose her virginity playing basketball is if the girl's team happens to play a boy's team and one of the girls lands on an erect penis when she comes down from a dunk. So these girls are still virgins, get it? This sounds less like a concern about the sanctity of the hymen and more a worry about allowing Muslim schoolgirls to actually do something meaningful with their lives, even if it's just to throw a ball through a hoop during break time. Dateline Israel. And this just in. The Jerusalem Post reports that several religious soldiers requested last week to wear earplugs or listen to MP3 players during a Holocaust Remembrance Day ceremony in which women were singing, as well as for upcoming ceremonies for Remembrance Day and Independence Day. For those not well versed in archaic Jewish law, the Post tells us it generally prohibits men from listening to women singing in person. In person? So it's okay if an Orthodox Jew listens to a woman singing on a CD or on the radio. But if he's listening on the radio and he's approaching the radio station and he goes inside and happens to catch a glimpse of the woman who's singing the song he's listening to on the radio, then that's not okay. And what if he's going into the radio station listening to the radio and he doesn't actually look at the window into the recording booth, but he happens to look away and catch a glimpse of the recording artist through a reflection in a glass door that's being opened there seems to be a law with a lot of fuzzy areas. Now, I'd hate anyone to spoil this wonderful archaic rule, but wouldn't it be, well, terrible if the next time you ladies are walking down the street and spot an orthodox Jewish gentleman, you burst into song? I certainly wouldn't condone such a despicable breach of religious taboo. This has been Wacky Religious News. 